So, um, today, the party arcs did what party arcs do, and voted on a uh, war powers resolution for Yemen. And that war powers resolution was being proposed to vote today by Bernie Sanders. For those of you who... Um, uh, keep up with this channel, uh, what I write, and uh, basically, like, associated people, uh, you know that um, the choice of Bernie Sanders is not going to be great for progressive causes. It's not going to be great for anarchist causes. It's not going to be great for anything actually radical, because when it comes down to it, he's not going to get jack shit done. Um, he's going to hem and haw about it. He's going to call uh, other people who don't do what he does a lot of names. He's going to virtue signal about various things in order to maintain uh, his ideological support in his base. And he's eventually just going to cave, just like the rest of the people, right? So, what do you think he did here? Um, did he, like change up the pace, did he actually give enough of a shit to, you know, put put his skin in the game and, you know, do something bold and anti-party and anti-establishment and radical alteration of his previous courses supporting all the mega corporate? uh, nope, nope, to, to get to what this bill was, Here's a here's a summary on antiwar.com of a couple of things uh, that 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 Scott Horton was saying. Uh, you should tell people about it. Uh, he said, you know, you should call before uh, tonight at seven p.m. Eastern time. Um, and he said that if you have a Democratic senator, tell them that this will help solidify support for Biden's diplomacy against the Republicans' opposition bring an end to devastating humanitarian crises, and uh, punish the arrogant MBS for his killing of Khashoggi and his hiking up of gas prices. If your uh, senator is a Republican, emphasize that this is not the war on terrorism against Al-Qaeda in the Arabian Peninsula. This war is against their worst enemies and has benefited the terrorists these past almost eight years. Tell them the Constitution reserves these powers to the Congress, and that it's time to start taking them back from Biden now. Um, so that's that's a, a reasonable approach, right? And it's a giant waste of money when we truly cannot afford to. Uh, America first, vote yes, and thank you. So that's what he wanted. And because this was being pushed by Bernie Sanders, Bernie Sanders, uh, he thought, like, yeah, sure, Let's make a real strong push and hard sell it to Republicans because they're who we're going to need support from. So he also wrote this for the Libertarian Institute where he said, uh, right now there's a huge opportunity for the Congress to force President Joe Biden to force the Saudis and UAE to end their war against Yemen. This intervention has been totally unauthorized by Congress and does not serve American interests. The only enemies of the American people in Yemen are the members of Al-Qaeda in the Arabian Peninsula, AQAP. They are real bin Ladenite anti-American terrorists. They bombed the USS Cole in 2000, helped to coordinate the September 11th attacks in 2001, tried to blow up a plane over Detroit with the underpants bomb in 2009, and committed machine gun massacres in France in the 2010s. In 2015, our current Secretary of Defense, Lloyd Austin, then commander of Central Command, was passing intelligence to the new Shiite Houthi regime to use to target and kill al-Qaeda for the United States. Just two months later, Austin helped President Barack Obama stab the Houthis in the back and took a cap side against them. Really, Yemen expert Michael Horton, no relation, told Pentagon reporter Mark Perry back then that the U.S. was now flying as al-Qaeda's air force against the Houthis. After al-Qaeda's gains under the American protection became too embarrassing, the Donald Trump administration had the UAE intervene against them in 18. UAE recruited them into their mercenary army and renamed them Giants Brigade. They remain an allied 
auxiliary force in the war to this day. As Senator Rand Paul once explained to an instantly converted Fox News host Neil Cavuto years ago, if the U.S. and its allies succeeded in their goal of regime change in the capital ACAP and the Muslim Brotherhood, Ali uh, Law could take over instead. What more could anyone possibly need to know about this war to oppose it? The war party may cry Iran, but it was not the Houthis, Hezbollah, or IRGC that knocked down the towers. It was Al-Qaeda, and Iran's role as a participant and motive for this war have always been exaggerated. Worse than treason, this war is a real, no-exaggeration genocide. From the very beginning, the Saudis and the UAE have inflicted massive damage on civilian targets, including water, electricity, sewage, hospitals, bridges, farms, fishing boats, markets, food distribution facilities of all kinds, and with the full support of the U.S. Navy enforced a brutal blockade against trade and aid into Yemen. Hundreds of thousands of people have been starved and otherwise deprived to death, including thousands of children under five years old from the worst cholera epidemic since World War II. When the House and Senate passed these resolutions back in 2019, Senator Mike Lee of Utah heroically led the charge for the America First Republicans, letting the rest know that it was okay to be tough but smart on the issue. This helped other Republicans feel like they could sign on and vote for it too. They did, and it passed. Unfortunately, President Trump, at missile maker Raytheon's request, vetoed the resolution. Biden, who unlike Trump campaigned on ending this war, would have a much harder time vetoing it. This may especially be true since it's a Democratic-controlled Congress. His otherwise completely incompetent and detestable Secretary of State, Anthony Blinken, has apparently been somewhat helpful in recent diplomacy in Yemen. Let them be encouraged, forced, to see a peace deal through. So, this, uh, this, this article is reasonable. You should finish uh, reading it at the Libertarian Institute. But, it would be a damn shame if Biden did indeed get in the way of this because he was a massive hypocrite this whole fucking time. And wouldn't you know it, that's exactly what happened. And Boyne Sanders withdraws Yemen war powers resolution vote over Biden opposition. The White House was asking senators to vote against the resolution and threatened Biden would veto the bill. So Senator Bernie Sanders on Tuesday night withdrew his request to vote on the Yemen war powers resolution that would end U.S. support for the Saudi-led war and blockade on Yemen citing White House opposition to the bill. Sanders said on the Senate floor that he was informed ahead of the scheduled vote of the administration's opposition to the legislation, meaning President Biden would veto the resolution. The Intercept reported earlier in the day that the White House was pressuring senators to vote against the bill, and Democrats came out in opposition to Sanders' resolution earlier on Tuesday, including Senator Alex Padilla. Sanders' justification for not holding the vote was that the administration claimed it would work with Congress on ending the war in Yemen. He said the White House wanted to work with us on crafting language that would be mutually acceptable, and insisted that if it didn't happen, he would resume his efforts to end the war through a resolution. <laughs> but even if the White House really wants to engage with Congress on the issue, or if Sanders chooses to reintroduce the resolution, the plan will take time, which Yemenis don't have. There has been a cessation in violence in Yemen, with no Saudi airstrikes since March, but there has been a recent uptick in fighting on the ground. A ceasefire expired in October, and without a real peace deal, the war could flare up again at any time. The resolution could have ended U.S. support for the Saudi-led coalition, including maintenance of its warplanes, which would effectively ground the Saudi Air Force. Even if Biden vetoed the resolution, its passage through Congress would have sent a fucking message to the White House and Riyadh to work faster on a real end of the war. While... Democrats started to fold in their support for the resolution. Republican Senators Rand Paul and Mike Lee both came out in favor of the legislation. In the House, a version of the resolution was also introduced that has gained 118 co-sponsors, including 10 Republicans. The U.S. first intervened to back the Saudi-UAE-led coalition in Yemen against the Houthis in 15. A few months earlier, the Obama administration was sharing intelligence with the Houthis as part of the effort 
against al-Qaeda in the Arabian Peninsula. After the Obama administration switched side against the Houthis, the U.S.-backed coalition recruited al-Qaeda fighters, and U.S. arms ended up in the hands of the terror group. According to UN estimates, by the end of 2021, at least 377,000 people have been killed in the war. The UN said that about 150,000 people had died in violence while the rest were killed by starvation and disease caused by the war and blockade on the country. The US-backed coalition is notorious for bombing civilians, and civilian casualties spiked earlier this year, right before the ceasefire was reached in March. So, obviously, a few people have brought up why this is bullshit. <laughs> because it's bullshit. You know, the U.S. is occupying a third of Syria in order to stop human rights violations, but <laughs> as long as Saudi Arabia keeps oil and resources cheap and allows the U.S. to do that while sanctioning Russia... Clearly, U.S. is totally on the side of opposing human rights violations because they oppose Russia. Sure. That's why they're maintaining Saudi warplanes. That's why they're helping Saudis um, invade oil fields and control rebellions. That's why they stab people in the back. Because the U.S. cares about human rights. <laughs> Since fucking when. And so... There are a few people uh, who have posted some opposition, right? You know? And Ryan Grimm over here, of course, because he's got to involve himself with, with anything. Um, you know? God, I, I, I do not like these people. <laughs> uh, was talking about how the White House was urging people to vote against it. Right? That's what this whole thing has been. It's been the U.S. supporting their allies because their allies help them be corrupt, violate human rights on a global scale regularly. And so Biden withdrew. Biden withdrew his support for the vote. And as a result... Everything fell through. So all the calls, all the everything people have been, you know, doing all day and for a significant period of time now trying to push this through, that was fucking useless. Now, just to be super clear here, I don't believe it was Al-Qaeda on 9-11. And if it was, it was because they were U.S. intelligence assets, just like they always were just like they were from Operation Cyclone on down. Like, y you don't immediately blame OBL out of fucking nowhere um, because it's convenient and also happens to match passports that were more resilient than buildings and planes. There's not a third building that goes down uh, in the same area because there weren't explosives. It fell, uh, World Trade Center 7 fell in its footprint. That's not because of isolated structure fires in the fucking building. How stupid do they think we... Oh, right. Very. You know, and, and like, if you want to see a good sort of summary of that, just check out James Corbett, 9-11, A Conspiracy Theory. It's a nice, fun little way to dive into some of these things, like the janitor you're not supposed to listen to, who talked about explosions in the sub-basement, the fact that the pictures of OBL seem to be getting fucking younger, <laughs> the fact that they just threw him in the ocean afterward, like, this isn't fucking real. This is, this, this isn't, they, they, they know it's bullshit, and they know that anybody who looks into it at all is gonna know that it's bullshit. So they just have to convince you that anybody like me is just some insane tinfoiled conspiracy theorist. You know, but that's 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 a semantic disagreement and I'm pretty sure that Scott is on a similar page and just wanted to write a nice appeal for Republicans. I don't know. 
I don't know. It'd be an interesting conversation to have. We're mutuals on Twitter, though, Scott, so if I did get that wrong and you do believe 9-11 was the fault of Al-Qaeda, then I'm all ears, you know. Um, either way, the general idea here is that Dave DeCamp updated us with that story about Sander Sanders withdrawing his support. And, um, you know, <laughs> this needed support, but didn't have it. And uh, Scott Horton accurately said that uh, he blames Rand Paul, that he was supposed to be young Ron in the Senate and with more willingness to rumble. He could have been championing this resolution all along. We know he knows about the war. He's why we had to rely on Bernie Sanders and his friends to even try. Mike Lee, too. The th there was not a single GOP co-sponsor in the Senate to this bill. Not one. America first nothing. And and you know what else? They have their own bill. And, you know, it's not quite successful yet. But they could have just done this one and it would have been a victory anyway. But no. <laughs> um, this is just yet more proof that partyarchy isn't going to work for libertarian means, for libertarian ends, for libertarian anything. And that you're not going to get, like, the end to an unconstitutional U.S. involvement in foreign genocide. Because you voted. Because you pressured people to vote properly. They all benefit from this. You know? The, 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 the political system benefits from U.S. involvement in these wars. And they always have, and they always will. That's why they create their own enemies and eventually stab them in the back, like Scott Horton talked about. It's why they created their own enemies in the form of the original Mujahideen and the sort of grooming of global terror. It's why they created the Nazi threat by enabling them post-war to escape Nazi Germany in exchange for fighting Soviet Russia, the same excuse they used for um, arming the Mujahideen. It's why they will constantly go against every single communist, leftist, whatever, anti-American, whatever, because that's their boogeyman. It's their excuse. They know it's a paper tiger. They know that these people pale in comparison to the might of the U.S. empire. But they still treat them like some terrible, evil, sinister, all-encompassing boogeyman hiding behind every fucking bush. But really, it was, you know, the CIA hiding behind bush. I, uh, I have to do things like that sometimes, you know. I just feel like this whole thing could have been much better handled if we would just realize that any support of these statist fucks is going to enable a genocide or 10. <laughs> you know? We need to realize that partyarchy isn't the answer and that the answer really is opposing every single one of these people at every turn especially repeated and reliable sellouts like Bernie Sanders who who hasn't had a spine in fucking decades who who like yeah he he fucking stood up to Hillary all right and then he got the shaft and fell the fucking line because cucking to the party that fucked you in front of your girlfriend that's 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 what that's what Bernie's ethos is. And he shouldn't be the spearhead of jack shit. And if he's the best you got, you're fucked. Because he will work with the warmongers. Biden is a warmonger along the same lines as Trump, who just threatened to veto a bill. Who just threatened to veto a bill that just said, be constitutional, bitch. 
That's all this thing was basically saying. Follow the rules you agreed to follow. No, I'm vetoing. <laughs> Otherwise, it'll be bad for diplomacy. <laughs> I guess the Constitution doesn't mean shit compared to Saudi money. <laughs> I mean, you remember, all of you who've been subscribed for a bit, remember... My video is about the Biden involvement in the Saudi bullshit and the fact that the Saudi money goes way deeper than a Trump golf tournament. And that Saudi money was why Twitter was functioning certain ways and that all of this stuff was why the U.S. government could turn to Saudi in the name of human rights. <laughs> Even though they are anything but the champion of human fucking rights. And why Biden is fist-bumping Saudis now instead of making them the pariah that he agreed to and catering and kowtowing to the people who fucking dismembered Khashoggi. Why is anyone surprised that this is the way this system works? It's designed to be evil. It's designed to enslave you. It's designed to murder. And as long as we keep playing their game... We're playing right into their hands. So let's build something better, different, new, radical. Not use their system. Not ask the warden for the keys to our cell. That's my proposition. And if you're with me, <clears throat> smash that subscribe button. Smash that like button, etc. There's lots more where this came from. And by the way, this is brought to you by Liberty Professionals, who will help you secure your home, small business, and life. And uh, he does bug sweeps now. He will help you with, like, your actual physical security by doing remote consultations from Texas. Or if you're in Texas and you need papers served, he can do that. There's just a variety of services he provides. So there's more information in the description. There's also Brushfire2048. He's The author has supported me before, and uh, if you want to support me and the author, um, it's uh, what things will look like in 2048. It's a taste of things to come, and I'll be doing a review of that book relatively soon. So, smash all those buttons, share this with a friend you want to black pill, and uh, most importantly, smash the fucking...